children of Israel many times before because you are the open door I read how you led them through the Red Sea with all your might and majesty Thursday evening's week of prayer reading. It is my joy to welcome you to share the word with us this evening. Our topic this evening, life-changing encounters, Christian lifestyle and the media. Our passage for meditation comes to us from Genesis chapter 27, and I read for you from verse 18. The word of God declares, so he went to his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we're truly thankful that you've been with us from morning until now. And as we go into your words, allow the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to open up the passages of your word to our hearts. Give us the courage and the faith to accept your words, we pray in Jesus' name. Who are you, my son? You know, I wonder if Jacob had anticipated that his father Isaac would have asked this question. Jacob probably hoped and even prayed that there would be not much talking. 
that his father would rather silently enjoy the dish Jacob served him than bless him and Jacob would leave his tent. Straightforward, no complications. Now, confronted with his question, Jacob needed to respond. But what should he say? I am Jacob, your son. This would be honest, but at the same time, his father would know that he, has, he was being deceived. Moreover, what would happen to the desired blessing? Would it turn into a curse? Jacob decided to lie, and so he answered. In verse 19, I am Esau, your firstborn. He pretended to be his brother in order to receive the blessing. Apparently not convinced, Isaac made further attempts to find out who was serving him. Finally, Jacob succeeded in taking on his brother's identity, and Isaac blessed him. You know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church have always been pioneers in using the newest media types for public evangelism in order to share the three angels' messages with an even wider audience. The church started using satellite evangelism in the 1990s and several years later launched the TV channels. Soon, the church operated the largest Christian television network worldwide. By using different types of media, we reached and continue to reach millions and millions of people with the good news of a loving God all around the globe. What a huge blessing it has been for individuals. But sometimes I wonder if we tend to broadcast a beautiful and perfect world of faith which does not correspond to who we are in everyday life. For the church and the media, do we really show how we should exercise our faith? By doing so, distracting ourselves from our shortcomings, our neediness and our brokenness? We have a hard time admitting to ourselves and to others that we are neither as good as we would like to be or the ideal faith that we broadcast requires us to be. You know, as a faith community, we want to help as many people as possible to come to know God. With this goal in mind, it's tempting to focus on showing the ideal and not the real. Why? Let's look at it. Let's examine it. First, everyone wishes to achieve and experience the ideal. Second, Communicating the ideal seems to have greater impact. Stories about failures and shortcomings are not as convinces, convincing rather, as success stories. Third, sharing faith includes teaching God's law, universal truths, and principles that are independent of culture, time, and other human beings. Fourth, isn't it all about God and not about us? About God's kindness and mercy. About his plan of salvation for all humanity. We do not want people to lose their trust in God and to give up faith because of our imperfections. These are all good and understanding and reasonable reasons for deciding to broadcast an ideal faith and a perfect life. At the same time, our concern or even fear that people might shy away from God when they see also our brokenness can lead us to hide the less pleasant sides of ourselves and eventually make ourselves appear better than we really are. We can become more concerned about being seen in a positive light than above what kind of persons we really are. You know, sharing faith, and that is what we do, sharing faith become more about appearance than about being character, more than perception, 
than about honest sharing and real encounters. Evangelism through media makes it easier for us to turn faith into perfect wishful projection than it would be possible in personal encounters. Because the medium, the television, the airwaves, the radio, the social media stands between people. We can retain a distance between the well-lit, good-looking, spiritual experience and the real faith experience seen in broad daylight. Our fears of rejection seem to be at the center of this, both individually and collectively as, faith, as a faith community. Therefore, focusing on God's perfection, God's laws and universal truths and on beliefs and principles can function as a convenient distractor or even an excuse from facing, accepting, and sharing our own imperfections. The goal of sharing faith, however, is not to convince others that the bearer is good and worthy, but that God is good, kind, and merciful. In him, people find acceptance, forgiveness, and life. You see, on Jacob's way to the east, God revealed himself as his savior and blessed him. God did not do this because of but in spite of who Jacob was. Jacob desired the blessing, but did not deserve it. He received it because of who God is. These considerations are not only relevant for media ministry, professionals. In the social media universe, in the midst of a constant tsunami of words, images, and clips, billions of people around the globe find themselves in the tension between their real and their media life, their media personality, their media selves. We live in carefully constructed, well-arranged, and decorated, holy, selfie land. Yet, the fundamental question, who am I, is for many of us a pressing issue an issue we need to address. It's a challenging question whether the sum of what we share with the whole world on various social media platforms reflects in the end an unreal, polished, and exaggerated fake self. Or do we allow people to see more accurate and realistic view of who we really are? After 20 years, Jacob decided to return home. In great fear, he prepared for meeting his brother Esau. A fight unexpectedly ensued during the night between Jacob and a stranger who turned out not to be human. In the midst of their struggle, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Was he still not sure of the blessing after all those years? What's your name? Asked the stranger. You know, I suppose Jacob was surprised, if not shocked, that his opponent confronted him with the same question his father had asked him 20 years before. Who are you? Would Jacob again pretend to be someone else in order to receive the blessing? Or would he be honest this time, irrespective of the consequences? Jacob, he answered. He finally had the courage to be himself, Jacob, the one who takes by the heel, the one who cheats. Faith is always personal, rational, and expressed in our life. Faith encompasses our whole being. Sharing faith and life in a holistic way requires sharing both the good and the bad, our successes and our failures, our struggles and our challenges, as well as our love and brokenness. The Bible does not fear. The authors of the Bible openly and transparently share the whole story and not only present the nice episodes. During that unexpected encounter with God, Jacob had to confront himself. He decided 
to admit who he was. And I ask us today, do we dare to walk that path? making ourselves vulnerable so that others can see us. God's love, kindness, and grace created a safe and redemptive space for Jacob. And God is willing to do that for you too. God is faithful. He provides the same space for all of us. We can boldly show individuals who we really are, sinners, also in need of salvation. And I thank God today that the grace he applied to Jacob is available for us today. Who are you? Who are you? Is the question on our minds today. Let's bow our heads together. Loving Lord, thank you so much that we can openly come before you and allow us allow ourselves to be vulnerable. We can show those whom we seek to evangelize who we really are. Help us, Lord, to show individuals the love of Jesus expressed in our hearts. Help us to be that overflowing cup that our lives will overflow to others, that though we have imperfections, they may see Christ living in us so that they may come to know you whom to know is life eternal. Thank you for the word to our hearts today. Bless us as we continue to sit at your feet and to really find out who we are so that we can truly reflect you in our lives so that somebody somewhere looking for a real situation with a real God will come to know you before it's too late. Thank you for answering our prayer today. We pray in Jesus' name.